men, believe it or not, are attracted to single mothers. They are. Uh, single mothers, especially when they're, they're young and uh, just have kids, are very sexually attracted to men. Uh, why is simple, is that men, they, they, they over, they're overwhelmed by a desire to protect her, to take care of her, to come in and help her, and she's displaying her fruitfulness, right? She still has her, her, the beauty of her youth, and here's these children, and, and men want to protect. And single moms know this, and they know a lot of guys will come to their rescue, and some of them use that in an evil way, but some of them know, like, just because, like, a lot of guys will rush in and, and play, you know, uh, dad to her children. It doesn't mean that she necessarily wants to be with that guy. I mean, be low quality. But nonetheless, they are very attracted because they have a, a desire to protect and provide. And uh, a woman without a husband and children without a father are vulnerable, right? Men want to care for those that are vulnerable. I get the drive to help people in such a situation, but that doesn't mean you should marry them, right? Saying, like, you should be careful about marrying a single mother isn't saying that uh, you shouldn't uh, help them. It's not even saying that you shouldn't marry them. It's saying this is not the same thing as two people starting out from scratch. You you enter into that relationship. uh, You're not just marrying the woman, but another man's children. And he still may be part of the picture. And he may have rights. He may not have rights. He may be a dangerous man. Right? It, it, there's a, a lot of things to consider when you're entering into the situation. And you just need to go with your eyes wide open in a particular way. Uh, so that's why I put that out there. I have warned women about the same thing with single dads. You know, I, I, know, I know a babysitter um, who ended up marrying the guy that she used to babysit for after he divorced his wife. As far as I can tell, she was just the babysitter. And, and afterwards, but I said, look, you're like 12 years younger than him, and the kids are only 15, younger, 15 years younger than you? That's a weird dynamic. You sure you want to get into this? There's like six kids or something. There's a lot of kids. And so, yeah, you know, I'll warn both sides. I don't have any problem with that. Um, but they didn't like that I said something negative, potentially, about single mothers. And they were really mad that I wouldn't delete it and I wouldn't apologize. And I have it. Every once in a while I retweet it just for fun. The same one. I just retweet it. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of this. This is good advice I would give anybody. Now, these days, I'm back to pastoring an entire congregation. Uh, last year, when I was at 21, our church was 20 people. And uh, when I left, it was 200 people. Hopefully, that'll be the same when I get back. Um, so it's my job as a pastor to guide people through a really jacked up time. Uh, and I, I, I'm last of a generation, I've realized. I married uh, my virgin high school sweetheart. Back in, we started dating in the 90s. I've been married to Emily for almost 19 years together for 23 years. We've had eight kids. One of them died, I talked about last year. That's what Anthony is refer- referencing. And we have four boys, three girls. Uh, my favorite thing to do at night is to sit back with my wife and drink a glass of wine and talk and laugh with her, right? Um, there's no dead marriage bed or anything like that. We don't, that's never been a struggle. We're happy. Uh, my marriage is an oasis in a dry, dry land. Uh, I love what I have. And it's, it's wonderful. And I didn't come into this world because I was divorced, raped, or... I, I had struggled with the ladies or anything like that. I didn't come here because I'm mad at women. I came here because I love men and want to figure out how to help them. And then Anthony started doing 22. I want to help women too. I really do. Do you think, I do think it's a little harder to help women? I feel like men are, are hated more than women, but women are lied to more than men. That would be my observation. They're lied to about their femininity. They're trained to hate their feminine glory and deference and all those things. Um, and so uh, helping a person when they know they're being like mistreated is easier than someone that's been deceived by lies. And you have to kind of bring someone through this awakening with ladies, and that's, that's difficult and uh, often emotional. So uh, it hasn't always been my favorite thing to go through, but w- the issue that we're facing is that people like me are disappearing. And if we're going to help relationships happen, 
that's going to mean that often people are going to get married who have been divorced or have had a ton of sexual partners, right, who have done shameful things. And they're going to come into these marriages, sometimes with kids, certainly with regrets. And it's, again, not the same thing as starting from scratch. So we have to decide. Are we just going to ignore those people? Well, you can't do that. Because sometimes you, you build the future, right, from the rubble. You know, it's like repurposing wood. Emily and I liked it. We don't watch it anymore, but we got sucked into those uh, shows where they, like, fix houses. But we got suckered into this one show where it's all about reclaiming, like, old wood and old cast iron and building something beautiful out of it. And it's just cool, right? And with, with rubble, with broken lives, you can reclaim some of that and, and be, build beautiful things from it. I want to read you an email I got last week. I'm going to try not to cry because it would be really embarrassing. All right. It's not beautiful. It's embarrassing. <laughs> so um, Emily and I got this last week. It's a long email, but I want to read it to you. 